Let us have a look at what are the various choices available to a designer while deciding the aircraft layout. Remember that uh, the word aircraft layout in aircraft design basically means the relative location of various uh, components as well as the nature of these or the shape and size of these components. So, what is the objective of uh, aircraft layout? Assuming that the aircraft that we are designing has major components like the fuselage, the wing, the tail planes, the engines, the landing gear etcetera, the main task of the designer while deciding the layout is to look at the conceptual shape of these components, look at the functional characteristics which uh, they have to possess and also the relative position with respect to each other. Now, there are a few driving factors which generally affect the choice of layout of an aircraft. There are also some special driving uh, factors which we will see separately. So, usually the functional requirements decide the layout. Okay, this is the most important thing. After that, one can always attribute selection of a particular layout due to safety and reliability considerations. And sometimes the layout is a function of the type of the propulsion system which is used by the designer. So, these are the three principal driving factors which decide the layout, but uh, there are many examples where there are certain special driving factors which have decided or uh, affected the choice of the layout. Let us look at a few of them, but sometimes there are certain special driving factors which are not very much obvious. So, let us have a look at a few of them. Availability of technology is one such factor. For example, let us have a look at uh, this uh, very challenging aircraft. This is the F 22 Raptor. Okay. So, we had a look at uh, F 22 Raptor, several technologies which uh, were developed in this particular uh, project are now fairly standard and because they are available, uh, you know they can be <coughs> driving factors. The economy and the production capabilities available 
are also a driving factor in choosing the layout. So, there we see the whole process of assembling the aircraft is along a production line. Okay. Sometimes the layout is decided purely by history and convention. For example, for instance, this is a typical configuration which has become fairly standard as far as an airliner is concerned. This is the conventional layout of an airliner which was perfected by the Boeing aircraft company uh, and then uh, uh, firstly in the Boeing 707, but then it is now fairly standard and almost every airliner that you see has a similar configuration. It has wing mounted engines, a conventional uh, tail configuration on the back and the wings are mounted on the lower side. Sometimes the layout is decided purely by stylish considerations or by style. For example, let us have a look at this very stylish aircraft called as the Mooney Acclaim. This aircraft is meant for private use. So, you can look at the plush interiors. It is an Acclaim model type S. Uh, but there are certain features in this aircraft which are outstanding. For example, uh, I just have a look at the design of the vertical tail. You will notice that the leading edge of the vertical tail is straight and the trailing edge is actually uh, in a way swept forward. Now, this is a style statement from Mooney Aircraft Corporation. There may not be any scientific reason for that. This is very clear in this particular figure. As you can see, the tail has a very distinctive feature and this distinctive feature of the tail is basically a style statement from this company, which wants to distinguish itself in the market of uh, general aviation aircraft. They want to stand out and they are making a style statement. So, this is an example of how style can dominate aircraft design. Then there are sometimes uh, design considerations which are driven by passenger appeal. Here is an example of a very interesting aircraft which is completely different from the other aircraft of its category. This is the beach starship. The looks of the aircraft are completely unconventional. This is also a general aviation aircraft. So, first thing that strikes is the canard in the front. Then you see that the wings are mounted behind in a swept fashion with twin vertical tails on the back. Now, interestingly, this aircraft appears to be a high speed aircraft by the shape, but it is actually driven by you know two turboprop engines. So, it is a turboprop engine aircraft, but the looks and the feel are that of a high speed aircraft. So, this is driven by passenger appeal. Here the attempt by the designer is to provide a shape that stands out, makes a style statement and looks completely different from anything else. Now, unfortunately, this aircraft was a technical success, but a commercial failure. It did not sell very well, but it always, it was considered to be a very appealing aircraft to the eyes and always drew attention. So, like that, some configurations are driven by appeal. Another interesting point that we should keep a note when we do aircraft design is that for the same requirements, more than one configuration may be suitable. So, in aircraft design, there are no fixed answers, there is no unique answer. There could be multiple solutions to address the same requirement and one could argue that each of them has its own distinct feature. and those features make it suitable or desirable. So, whenever students are given an aircraft design problem, 
it is quite possible that different teams will come out with totally different looking designs. Let us also look at what happens in real life. For example, here are three strategic bombers almost uh, which appeared at almost the same time. On the extreme left is the flying wing configuration of Avro Vulcan bomber. In the middle is the Boeing B 47 Stratojet which is a conventional configuration with a highly swept wing. This is from the American uh, design stable. On the right is the Triple F 16 Badger which is a solution to the same problem by the Russians. So, we notice that to meet the same requirement or almost similar requirements of a strategic bomber, we have the Britishers coming up with a flying wing Vulcan, the Americans coming up with a highly swept Boeing B-47 and similar but little bit different looking configuration with the engines mounted on the route of the Tupelo 16 Badger. Let us have a look at a comparison of the geometry and the performance of these three aircraft. So, we notice that uh, the numerical value of uh, various design parameters are quite different, but interestingly the lift over drag ratio or the L over D ratio uh, is the almost the same for a B 47 as well as for the Avro Vulcan. Uh, for the triple F Tu 16 we do not have a value, so we do not know. Okay. You can see they were all designed almost at the same time 1956, 1951, 1954, okay. but they look so different and that is because different designers came up with different solutions. Similarly, that is one example in the recent history of uh, an advanced tactical fighter, which was essentially an air superiority fighter, uh, a replacement for the various versions of the F-15 aircraft. The requirements specified were to use advanced alloys in the construction along with composites to provide a feature of fly by wire and stealth. Okay. This competition was launched in 1986 by the US Department of Defense and two consortia locked into a battle. There was one consortia, consortium consist of Lockheed Martin, Boeing and General Dynamics. Their design was called as the YF-22 and on the other side there was a partnership between Northrop and the McDonnell Douglas and they had a configuration called as YF-23. After about 5 years of uh, rigorous design review, the winner was declared in 1991. The first aircraft was delivered 9 years later in 2000, but within 7 years 100 aircraft were delivered. And uh, this is some information regarding the cost of the aircraft. Okay. Now the question is who was the competition from the Russian stable? for this aircraft. The competition was the Sukhoi 27 aircraft and to compete with this aircraft, the two competing designs for the advanced tactical fighter of the US Air Force. On our left is the YF-22 and on the right is YF-23. So, you can notice that the two designs are quite distinct. There are some common features also. The YF-23 for example has a diamond shaped wing, okay. whereas the YF-22 which ultimately won the competition and through that we got the Raptor F-22 was more of a delta configuration platform. Similarly, there was a competition recently on a joint strike fighter aircraft. So, this particular aircraft um, was it has undergone many many variations. Uh, US Marine Command and US Air Force gave a requirement for an uh, ASTOVL in 1992. Then there was a US Navy joint hands next year and the aircraft was called as JAST. In 1995, 
the royal air force of uk also said that we are interested in the same aircraft so then it became a multi country project it is supposed to replace four different aircraft that's why it's a multi role aircraft it's supposed to replace f16 a10 fa18 and av8b harrier so it it uh, wanted to have a uh, a conventional takeoff and landing facility okay and also a short takeoff and landing uh, ability this competition was launched in 1996 and uh, lockheed martin came up with x35 and boeing came up with x32 after 4 years we had another uh, we had a declaration of the winner and that winner was x35 which is now in production but you can see a totally different looking aircraft with a um, huge intake mounted below the fuselage was the configuration suggested by the boeing aircraft corporation so boeing and lockheed martin competed for the same requirements and came up with totally different configurations this particular uh, this particular competition has been very nicely filmed in uh, a documentary called as the battle of explains and i recommend that uh, this documentary should be shown in the class as part of the course because many interesting features about this two aircraft and their designs have been explained very nicely in this documentary so when you look at the layout of the aircraft you have various possibilities first let's look at the possibilities for the layout of the wing should we go for a high wing that means the wing mounted over the fuselage should we go for a low wing the wing mounted below the fuselage or should we go for a mid wing should the passenger cabin and or the cockpit be located ahead of the wing in the middle of the wing or behind the wing so when we come to propulsion we have a large amount of choice depending on which power plant type we use and how many units of power plant or how many engines do we provide if we choose a single engine propeller driven aircraft we have a choice between a tractor or a pusher configuration a tractor is a configuration in which the engines are mounted ahead of the aircraft and pusher is a configuration in which the engine is mounted behind the aircraft for for example for example the beach starship which we saw few minutes ago is a pusher configuration because the engines are mounted behind in that case we have two turboprop engines whereas the muni a claim that we saw recently whereas the muni a claim that we saw few minutes ago was a tractor because there was a single engine and that was mounted right in the front if you have a single jet engine you have a choice of whether you mount it in the nose or you mount it in the rear if we have multiple engines on a propeller driven aircraft usually we go for two engines and mount them on the wing but there are examples of three engines and uh, you know <coughs> other configurations also if you are using multi engine prop fans generally we go for either wing mounted or rear fuselage mounted in a pusher configuration if you have multiple engined jet aircraft then we have a choice of either two engines three engines four engines maybe more uh, the record is for eight engines and location wing mounted fuselage mounted tail mounted or at multiple places for the tail plane we have again a choice for the horizontal tail it could be an aft tail or it could be a canard or you can have three surface or you can have tail less then in the configurations we have various types which we will see very shortly you can have conventional tape t tape uh, you can have conventional tail t tail v tail inverted v h tail inverted h u inverted u etc etc 
As far as landing gear is concerned, you could have nose wheel type, tail wheel type, bicycle type and quadricycle type and there are several other types also which are possible. Okay, thanks for your attention. We will now move to the next section.